Hi guys, how are you doing? This is Sebastian from Tech Century, and welcome to my latest video in the series What to Buy, where I try to help you decide whether the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro with Retina display is the right machine for you. First, let's take a look at the price of both machines and the MacBook Air 13 inch currently starts from 999 US dollars from apple.com but you actually have to pay 100 US dollars premium to upgrade to the 8 GB of RAM that the MacBook Pro with Retina features and the MacBook Pro with Retina display currently starts at 1299 US dollars. Now to save some money, it's always a good advice to take a look at Amazon or other retailers to get a discount on these machines or even save sales tax or to take a look at the refurbished section of the Apple Store. Starting off, we'll take a look at the advantages of the MacBook Pro with Retina display. So the first advantage is pretty obvious and that's the display. The Retina display on the MacBook Pro features a resolution of 2560 x 1600 and Apple uses a high quality IPS panel that not only provides a great color reproduction but also amazing viewing angles. On top of that, the display on the MacBook Pro with Retina display is also brighter than this found on the MacBook Air with a brightness of around 380 candela. In contrast to this, Apple uses a cheaper TN panel on the MacBook Air that has worse viewing angles and color reproduction as well as a lower resolution of 1440 by 900 and even the brightness is lower at around 310 candela. In general, you can say that no matter if you're looking at text or also video, every content looks significantly better on the MacBook Pro with Retina display. Another big advantage of the MacBook Pro with Retina display is the performance. The 2.7 GHz Broadwell Intel Core i5 chip offers a 16% higher performance than the 1.6 GHz chip that's found in the MacBook Air. And we also get similar results when we look at the GPUs. The Iris Pro 6100 is 16% faster than the Iris 6000 that's found in the MacBook Air. On top of that, the MacBook Pro also offers 8GB of RAM, which helps with multitasking when compared to the 4GB in the MacBook Air. Another advantage of the MacBook Pro that you don't immediately see on paper are the ports. So the MacBook Pro with Retina display offers an HDMI out, which allows you to hook up external displays without the need for any adapters. And the MacBook Pro also offers two Thunderbolt ports that can be used to connect displays or other peripherals like, for example, SSDs. In general, it's also possible to connect two external displays to the MacBook Pro while the MacBook Air only supports one. Probably the last big advantage of the MacBook Pro with Retina display is the new Force Touch trackpad. Now this trackpad just simulates a click and therefore you can use it completely silent. On top of that, you can click everywhere on the surface of the trackpad and it also supports new gestures, for example, like pressure sensitive uh, forwarding in apps like QuickTime. But now let's move on to the MacBook Air and let's take a look at what advantages this machine has to offer over the MacBook Pro. First off, of course, we have to mention the weight. At 1.35 kilograms, the MacBook Air is significantly lighter than the MacBook Pro that comes in at 1.58 kilograms. That being said, both machines are very light for laptops and they're easy to carry around. Another advantage of the MacBook Air is the battery life. While the MacBook Pro already offers great 10 hours of usage while browsing the web, the MacBook Air even exceeds this with 12 hours. Last but certainly not least, the angular design of the MacBook Air also leads to a more comfortable typing experience because your hand and wrist just rest more naturally on the machine. Before you think about purchasing either one of these machines, there are two aspects that you should be aware of. And that's first off that the 4GB of RAM on the MacBook Air are not really future-proof and that they aren't good enough for multitasking these days, so I would definitely recommend to upgrade to 8 gigabytes, and this is $100 extra on the Apple website. And another aspect is the storage. Both machines just come with 128 gigabyte SSD, which is pretty small. So either upgrade to a 256 gigabyte SSD from Apple, which is fairly expensive, or you can also just pick up a Jet Drive Lite 
from Transcendent and these are available from Amazon.com for around $65 for the 128 gigabyte version. And this is just a small flash drive that sits flush in the SD card slot. So now it's time for my verdict. In the end, the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro both have their advantages and disadvantages. Now, which one is the right machine for you really depends on your usage as well as your budget. If you need further assistance in choosing the right machine for you, then just leave your comment down below telling me what you need the machine for and I'll be glad to help you out. That being said, thank you very much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like. It always helps me out and subscribe to the channel. Also, a big thanks to Ferdy from Amigan Videos for this new channel design and the new graphics. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below.